Happy Saturday, everybody. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. You're not going to believe what I've been finding here in Nashville. There are some listings that are literally for sale now that are for several hundred thousand dollars less than what they were bought for in 2021. I've got one that I'm going to show you, and then we're going to look at the results for October. There are some places that are skyrocketing year over year. There are some places that are down year over year, and we're going to look at a troubled neighborhood. It doesn't matter if you live in Nashville or even if you look in Nashville at these two neighborhoods. You can apply what I'm going to show you to anywhere you are, but let's hit some headlines first. Now, my name's Ethan Flynn. I am a CPA. I am a licensed real estate agent. I help cash buyers in primarily Williamson County. The focus, the reason I'm helping cash buyers is really, if you're not a cash buyer, it doesn't make sense to buy. You would spend more just on interest expense alone than you would renting. And that doesn't include property tax, insurance, maintaining the house, any surprise expenses. It's just not worth it. And the last thing I want to do is help somebody take their life savings and speculate on a housing market that could frankly go up or down. I just wouldn't sleep well at night. So I'm not going to do that. Without further ado, let's hit some headlines. Uh, Zillow is predicting home prices could spike nearly 5% in 2024. Let me remind you, if you don't know who Zillow is, wink, wink, Zillow is the company that in 2021, in the greatest bull market of all housing bull markets, when prices were rising faster than they've ever risen in history, Zillow managed to lose $1 billion and quit citing home price unpredictability. So for what it's worth, home prices could spike 5% in 2024 per Zillow. I actually don't disagree. I think they could spike 5%. I also think they could drop 30%. Neither would surprise me. All right, let's keep going. Now, this is important. You guys got to pay attention to this. This is the real-time SOM rule recession indicator. If you don't know what that is, anytime the unemployment rate increases half a percent above the average unemployment rate over the last 12 months, then you're in a recession. And you can see, well, let's just see. You can see how, boom, it spiked, recession. Boom, it spiked, recession. Boom, it spiked, recession. So anytime it spikes, you get a recession. Now, why this is interesting, it is starting to spike. I felt like something changed in September. Okay, so it wouldn't surprise me if in September or October, we actually quote unquote entered a recession. Interestingly enough, Nashville has been an extremely resilient market compared to even other boomtown markets. Nonetheless, if unemployment takes off, you would expect it's going to hit everywhere and it will hit Nashville too. If I haven't told you today that commercial real estate is a disaster, let me just remind you, that's not what this video is about, but let me just remind you that commercial real estate is a disaster. If you think, Ethan, this doesn't impact me, you're wrong. It's going to impact you whether or not you own commercial real estate or you think you don't own commercial real estate, it will impact you. And it, it, just in almost, I can name just off the top of my head, uh, it's, it's in your retirement, I'm almost positive. Uh, it, it's in insurance reserves. So probably insurance goes up. I don't know what's going to happen there. Property tax. Think about it, guys. Do you know that commercial real estate gives a huge amount to the counties and cities that they live in or that they reside in through property tax? If those values come down, especially in Tennessee, guess who picks up the tab for that? It's going to be residential. All I'm saying is, is it doesn't matter whether or not you own commercial real estate, you will be impacted by the commercial real estate crash. And it is crashing. Single family is not crashing. Commercial real estate is absolutely unequivocally crashing. It, this is the greatest price reset I've ever seen in my life. There's a lot of distress out there. Okay, so Nashville hits another record year-to-date active listing high on October 28th. Now, you remember, in the beginning of a month, there's always a big crash in active listings. You can see it all the way back. That's because a lot of it expired and canceled. You have to reset, but look at it bounce back. It's already almost at 6,400. So, I would expect in November, we get a new record active listing high in Middle Tennessee. This is extremely important. This is huge because guys, we could exceed, this could be a multi-year high in inventory. Now, also look at the month supply. The month supply is relative to the under contract volume. So let me just show you contract volume here real quick. Contract volume is 1840, 1840. That is so low. Think about that. 1840 being a predictor for closed volume over the next 30 days, 1840 is just so low. Uh, September, we got 2200. If we go back to last year, let's just go back to last year really quick. We can see last year in October, 
We closed 2,300 in November. We closed right at 2,000. So if we get something in the 1800s, we're talking about, let me just show you, let me show it this way. You can see this blue line is the monthly closed volume for 2023. I mean, this is closed volume. You have to go back a decade probably to see closed volume this low. And it's not like Middle Tennessee's population is shrinking. So you would expect where we would get 37 to 40,000 in a healthy, normal housing market, we are closing about 26,500. Where are those 11,000 people? Where are, are they renting? Where are they going? I don't know. I don't know because they're still coming here, guys. But they're not buying a house. So here we have 2150 is my prediction for October. And you can see that's even lower than the massively low uh, con uh, sales volume we had last year in October. It, this is just so bad, guys. It's just, it's so low. It's so low. Uh, let's take a look at price real quick. So when we look at price, here we are in September. We finished at 468, 410. Let's look at price really quick. And we can see we're at 472. This has actually dropped quite a bit as the closings, uh, the stragglers come in. We're now at 472. So we're still up about a percent. We were up about 2%. We're still up about a percent. And I suspect that'll probably be about where it comes in, 472 to 475. Could it drop lower? Sure, it could. I mean, there's still some stragglers that'll come in. They'll probably snapshot this on Monday. Um, the bottom line is it's up. It's up. It's not dropping. Okay, a couple of things I want to show you here. This is West Haven. Now, if you don't know where West Haven is, so come into Franklin. West Haven is, I pick on it a lot. A lot of you know West Haven. It, it, it's an awesome neighborhood, guys. It's an awesome neighborhood. There's some great YouTube videos on it. Google West Haven. You can see some great, people have some great YouTube videos on it. It really is its own community. Um, so what does West Haven look like? This is what it looks like. And um, interestingly enough, you can see, I highlighted yellow the last five closings. So you can see each one of these dot plots is a closing in West Haven, price per square foot. Okay, so the whole point of this is are prices dropping or increasing? What's happening in West Haven? And you can see, for the most part, they're pretty stable. And they run between 500 and really 350, which seems like a lot. But when you factor in age of the unit, it actually is pretty predictable where the price will come in. Now, here you can see the median price is about 425. And we have one, two above it. We have two below it and we have one right in the middle. It's wild. It's wild. That median price, the last five transactions you see. The lower houses, here's a million dollar house that uh, this list price was $1,075,000. It ended up closing at a million dollars. So $75,000 discount, not bad. $384 a foot. That's cheap for West Haven, crazy enough. And here's one listed for $829, sold for $815, and that is $350 a square foot. So anytime you're getting something for $350 or less a foot, you're definitely definitely getting on the lower end of West Haven. Lad Park. Now, Lad Park is east of 65. So I'm going to zoom back in here. We're still looking South Nashville. This is this is one of the wealthiest counties. If you're not familiar with Williamson County, it's south of Nashville. That's where we are right now. And Lad Park is just south of Murfreesboro Road. This is a relatively new development. And here is Lad Park. Now, the reason I wanted to point out Lad Park, I'm going to show you something in just a second here, but let's look at how weak Lad Park is compared to West Haven and some of those others. You can see we're well below 300 a foot on a lot of transactions. And look at this one. This one sold for 276. That one sold for 253. And these are $900,000 houses. And then we had one that another $900,000 house that sold for almost 300 a foot. Why are prices dropping in Lad Park? And is this a sign of weakness? Should we be worried if we own or we're thinking about listing in Lad Park. If we go up Crothers Parkway, just, I mean, I don't even know if this is a mile. I mean, it's very, very close. It's the sister neighborhood right above. You're going to see these new build listings right here. And you can get a new build for a million dollars, but look at this, 4,000 square feet. So we're showing new builds listing anywhere from 240 a foot to 260 a foot. Guys, these new builds come with warranties. They come with brand new appliances, a brand new roof. I mean, when you think about getting a 4,000 square foot house for a million dollars or coming down here and getting a 3,400 square foot house, I mean, that's a significant difference. Now, I don't know the quality of this builder, okay? I don't know the specific situation, but I can look at this and I'll tell you what an average buyer is going to say is why would I spend a million dollars down here versus getting one of these new builds up here? And they will explore it. They'll go and look. And if these new builds are better and higher quality or equal quality, 
then you've got a problem down here. So Lad Park to me is a risky area and you can see the median price has been dropping because of that. And it's it's obvious, they've got new builds that are building for, for lower prices. So let's go back and look at West Haven just so you can see the difference here. So in West Haven, a lot of these over here are new builds and let's just see. Okay, here's one that's, that's, that's a new build. Look at this, it's listing for 500 a foot. Okay, so you see the difference? The median price in West Haven is around 425 a foot, where new builds are selling for 515 a foot. Okay, you go back over to Ladd Park, and what do you see? You see new builds that are being listed for lower, where the median price per square foot, the median price per square foot is around 276, and we see new builds building for lower than 276. And that's your problem, guys. That's your problem. Here, new builds are gonna put massive pressure on prices, whereas in West Haven, new builds are leading the price growth. So which one do I think is healthier? As insane as it sounds, I think West Haven is healthier, at least from the new build perspective, even though it's just so much more expensive there, I would feel better from the standpoint of, at least I don't have new builds that are crushing the price of houses. Whereas here, to me, that's a, bit, that's a competitive risk here. It's a competitive risk. So just keep that in mind as you're looking, look for the new build neighborhoods around where you're looking to see, are they putting pressure on existing home prices or not? If you're thinking about selling, it's also something you have to consider is, you know, is someone really going to buy my house over a new build? Yes, no. Why? What's your competitive advantage? Why would you rather live in your house versus buy a new build? And you have to price, you have to acknowledge that in prices. Otherwise you'll just sit for a very long time. Guys, look at this house selling for 2.2 million, 386 a foot. Where is it? Yeah, look at that. Close in March of 22 for 2.5 million. They've now got it listed for 2.2 million. That's $300,000 less than what they bought it for just a year and a half ago. Man, wow, that's 15%. I don't want to say that's not a bad deal, but I'd much rather have it at 15% less than where they bought it in March of 22, where the quote unquote peak was. That is pretty wild. I don't know the story on this one. I just saw it and thought, wow, I am working on another potential deal that is getting, it's in Williamson County, but it is also getting several hundred thousand dollars below where someone purchased it in 2021. So I'm just telling you they're out there. It's crazy. I know it's crazy. Last thing I want to show you, here we got a map of Nashville. Where are the prices the weakest? Davidson County, minus 3% year over year. Murfreesboro, or excuse me, Rutherford, Murfreesboro, minus 1% year over year. Look at Wilson, up 6%. Look at Sumner, up 9%. Look at Franklin, up 3%. Cheatham County, up 15% year over year. And Dixon, up 9%. Now, I will say with some of these outer counties, it, it, it is a lot lower close volume. But the bottom line is, is that this, this does generally reflect what's happening in those counties. Obviously, the lower volume counties swing much harder, much harder. The thing that catches my eye here is Davidson and Rutherford, both weak on price year over year, especially in the fall. It's kind of interesting. Here's my theory, okay? I think that highly leveraged, there's the only people that are selling right now are the people that have to sell, estate sales um, or people that are having trouble paying their mortgage. The reason that's important it's because in Davidson and Rutherford, these are high, highly leveraged FHA areas. I, my thesis is they're putting their houses on the market when they can't make those mortgage payments. I think that's a risk. Prices could come down in these areas because, because people are forced to sell when there's no demand out there. So just keep that in mind. When you're, when you're looking, when you're buying or when you're selling, are you in a highly leveraged area where there's forced sales? That is a cause for concern. Are you in an area where there are new builds that are priced lower than existing homes. That is a problem. You wanna see new builds leading the price up, not leading the price down. And right now, builders have margin. If they wanna drop their prices, they can drop them. Typically, they'll try to do that in a neighborhood next to the neighborhood. So it's like, oh, but this is a different neighborhood. Oh, it's not quite as good quality, blah, 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 blah. With that being said, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day and I'll see you next, next Saturday.